When you hear the name Marshawn Lynch, what do you think? Dominant. Marshawn Lynch! Still on his feet! Enigmatic. I'm here so I won't get fined. Hilarious. I told you, man, give me the blammy, bro, and I, I'll pop it from right here, man. Misunderstood. Does the velvet rope really help? <laughs> beast mode. The beast mode yet? Oh, man. There are only a few figures in the history of football who have been able to invoke so many emotions and be just as captivating off the field as they are on it. Lynch is second to none in that category. From day one, he faced constant hurdles on the road to NFL stardom, first navigating a troubled childhood in North Oakland, then a series of legal issues and a friction-filled relationship with the media. But despite the challenges, Lynch persevered as one of the most popular and exhilarating players in the game. This is the story behind Marshawn Lynch. Marshawn Terrell Lynch was born on April 22, 1986 and grew up in the tough neighborhood of Goldenville in North Oakland, California. His mother Deliso worked two jobs to make sure that there was food on the table for Lynch and his three older siblings, Devante, David, and Marisha. And throughout his childhood, his father Maurice Sapp bounced in and out of jail and eventually would serve a 24-year sentence for burglary. Delisa's job was now threefold, her two jobs to pay the bills and the other, making sure her children stayed out of trouble. They weren't allowed to go outside of the gate. I'll just put it like that. We lived in, a, in apartments where they had a front gate and a back gate, and they were not allowed outside of either one. That's how tough it was. Sports ran through Lynch's DNA. His uncle Lorenzo Lynch was a running back for the Arizona Cardinals in the 90s, and Delisa was a track star at Oakland Technical High School, where Lynch would continue his family's legacy in athletics. Lynch was a four-sport star at Oakland Tech, playing football, basketball, running track, and competing in wrestling. In basketball, Lynch helped lead Oakland Tech to the state semifinals with future NBA player Leon Poe. In track, he recorded a personal best 10.94 second 100 meter dash as a senior, while also competing in high jump and long jump. And in football, well, he dominated and earned what would be his nickname for the rest of his life, Beast Mode. In his senior year, Lynch amassed 1,722 rushing yards and 23 touchdowns in only eight regular season games and an additional 375 rushing yards and 10 touchdowns in two postseason games. He was voted a prep star and super prep All-American and was also voted as the San Francisco East Bay Player of the Year. Lynch even experimented with other positions, playing quarterback, wide receiver, and defensive back, where he registered 20 interceptions in his senior year. By graduation time, Lynch was ranked the number one defensive back in the country and the number two running back behind Adrian Peterson. And despite all of his success, Lynch was really a quiet, introverted kid. What questions can you ask Roland Williams that could possibly help you since you're only a sophomore? Educational-wise, playing running back, stretching-wise, anything. Give me a question for Roland Williams. Your uncle told me to ask you this question. Talk to him earlier today, man. Don't be shy, bro. Got no question. Give me something. Well, I got a question for you. I, I, okay, I got a question for you then. Think of something, man. Ask me what kind of shoes I wear, yeah, man. Come ask, with ask, something, man. Be yeah, hot. Yeah, you on yeah, TV. Give me I got to put you on the spot, man. It's real TV. Show up in the lights. The lights is on. Show up. Show up, player. He was highly recruited out of high school, getting offers from schools like Oregon and Washington State, but instead decided to stay close to home, 15 minutes to be exact, at the University of California, Berkeley, where he would also play with his two cousins. After running behind starter J.J. Arrington in 2004, Lynch took the starting role in year two, running for over 1,200 yards and 10 touchdowns. To cap off the season, he earned Las Vegas Bowl MVP honors with a 194-yard, three-touchdown performance in a win over BYU. Curiosity back. He 
started nine games after the injury. Marshawn Lynch. What an effort. Touchdown. Shining seven days a week. Going to Before his junior year, Lynch was named the 8th best player in the nation by Sports Illustrated and continued to prove his worth, running for over 1,200 yards and scoring 11 touchdowns, including a game winner against Washington that led to this memorable celebration. Across the field. <laughs> that that is more ridiculous. Lynch was named to the 2006 All-Pac-10 team and was the All-Pac-10 Offensive Player of the Year and to this day still holds the record at Cal for most 100-yard rushing games at 17. Lynch then opted to forego his senior year and enter the NFL Draft. With the 12th pick in the 2007 NFL Draft, the Buffalo Bills select Marshawn Lynch. For a 21-year-old, moving from Oakland to Buffalo was a culture shock for Lynch, who admittedly didn't know how far the city was from the Big Apple. So I thought it was finna be on and pop. I thought I was finna be out there with, <laughs> with Jay-Z. And, <laughs> and then when I finally landed in Buffalo, oh man, it was like slush on the ground, just finished snowing. I ain't know nothing about no snow. It took some time for Lynch to get adjusted, but once his mother moved to Buffalo, he started to feel at home, and it showed on the field. Lynch ran for consecutive 1,000-yard seasons in his rookie and sophomore years, earning him a Pro Bowl appearance in 2008. And he was embraced in Buffalo like he was one of their own, getting showered with Skittles after every touchdown by his mother, and becoming a mainstay at... at Applebee's? Hey! I love the ambiance. I love the decor. I spent a lot of time trying to figure out which one I like more, the ambiance or the decor. They let me pour my own drink. I love the sound it makes, so much power. Lynch was establishing himself as one of the best backs in the league and making Buffalo football exciting again. But legal troubles were constantly becoming roadblocks to an otherwise successful start to his career. In June of 2008, Lynch pleaded guilty to a hit and run charge and his license was revoked after hitting a woman with his Porsche in the bar district of Buffalo. Asked about the incident, Lynch said, It was raining really hard. There was a dancing pedestrian in the middle of the street. I slowed down to let her go and continued on my way home. I didn't know my car hit anyone or anything. And in the summer of 2009, just months before Lynch's third season with the Bills, he was arrested in Culver City, California for having carried a concealed weapon in his vehicle. He pleaded guilty to misdemeanor gun charges, and the NFL suspended Lynch for the first three games of the season. Lynch tried and failed to appeal the suspension, and even apologized saying, I have made mistakes in the past. Although I have learned many lessons over recent years, I obviously hadn't learned enough. Despite that, many in the Buffalo media and fans turned on Lynch. It was reportedly discovered that multiple fans had been using racial language toward Lynch on a Bills internet message board. Recently, Lynch's former teammate Bruce Hall spoke about the media's turbulent relationship with Lynch in a piece from The Athletic, saying, But here they are painting this picture of him as a troublemaker, but do not understand or only have snippets of the story and do not have the full picture. While in the same story, former Bills VP of player personnel John Guy added, I think he took a beating in the press. I think the press in Buffalo taught him lessons that he never forgot. I would like to see them grow up in project housing authorities, being racially profiled growing up, sometimes not even having nothing to eat, sometimes having to wear the same damn clothes to school for this for a whole week and then all of a sudden a big ass change in their life like they dream come true to the point where starting their career at 20 years old when they still don't know shit. i would like to see some of the mistakes that they would make Lynch would soon be replaced by running back Fred Jackson as the starting rusher, and his relationship with the Bills' front office began to sour. Four weeks into the 2010 season, Lynch was traded to the Seattle Seahawks for two future draft picks. 
In his first season in Seattle, Lynch and the Seahawks earned a wildcard spot, facing the defending Super Bowl champion New Orleans Saints as heavy underdogs in what was his first playoff game of his career. With the Seahawks up 34-30 in the dying minutes of the fourth quarter and the ball in Seattle's possession, Lynch ran for a 67-yard touchdown, which is arguably the greatest run in NFL history. Crowd silent now, as opposed to when the Saints have the ball. Oh, look at this run! What a run! Marshawn Lynch! Still oh. on his feet! Has blockers now! He's dancing his way for the touchdown! Uh. What's now called Lumen Field became so loud that 100 yards away from the stadium, a seismograph registered it as an earthquake. That run by Lynch would forever be known by fans as Beastquake. Despite losing in the next round, Beastquake catapulted Lynch into stardom. He instantly became a sensation both on and off the field, him and his Skittles obsession. Is this on? How you doing, Big Daddy? How you doing, sweetheart? I'm so glad you're here. My uncle told me, man, you're disrespectful if you call them Skittles. You say they power pellets. <laughs> And the crowd went crazy. Skittles were flying out of the crowd. And then they had to get their Skittle scoopers out and come pick it all up. In his first full two seasons with the Seahawks, the Sugar Rush helped Lynch rush for over 2,600 yards and he earned two All-Pro selections, including being selected to be first team All-Pro in 2012. At the end of that season, after rushing for over 1,500 yards, a career high, Lynch signed a four-year, $31 million contract extension with Seattle. At this point in his career, Lynch was dominating on the field. And while he was one of the funniest people off the field as well, he and the media were still at odds. Through the 2013 season, Lynch ignored media availability, causing the NFL to fine him $50,000. Seahawks fans actually fundraised the amount, which Lynch later donated to charity. That season, with a formidable defense led by Richard Sherman and an offense led by Lynch's ferocious running ability and a young quarterback in Russell Wilson, the team was dominant, finishing 2013 at 16-3 and, and beating the Saints and the San Francisco 49ers on their way to Super Bowl 48. But the attention was always on Lynch and his stance towards the media, except for this classic interview with legend Deion Sanders. You kind of shy. Nah. You just don't want to talk, really. I'm just about that action, boss. You about to go get it. You, you, you just like to do it. That's what it is. I ain't never seen no talking with me, nothing. Yeah. Yep. Been like that since I was little. I was raised like that. Well, I respect it. Yeah. It's going to be a good something, You go get it. Ain't no need to talk about it. You excited about the game? Hell yeah. <laughs> Lynch and the Seahawks proved they were about that action too, absolutely dismantling Peyton Manning's Denver Broncos 43-8 on their way to the franchise's first championship. He's not here today, but we got to give props to Beast Mode, Marshawn Lynch. I am sorry that Marshawn's not here because I just wanted to say how much I admire his approach to the press. <laughs> As for his interactions with the media, Lynch started the 2014 season the same way, silent. And on November 19th, Lynch was fined $100,000, causing him to change his methods. Uh, sort of. Yeah, 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 <laughs> maybe, I don't know. Yeah. Still having fun, Mark? Yeah. Thanks for asking. What's that? I said thanks for asking. Nice appreciate time. it. Thanks for asking. I appreciate you asking about my stomach. Thank you. Y'all want to try again, huh? So y'all gonna try again? That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna try one more time. I'm thankful. Talk about your performance in the second half, the big run. I'm thankful. Lynch's bad boy persona was furthered by a series of NFL fines, including for Lynch's signature crotch grab touchdown celebration, which to be fair, wasn't allowed, but he also got fined for wearing his own green cleats and even for wearing his own beast mode merchandise. When the Seahawks made it to their second consecutive Super Bowl, where they would face Tom Brady and the New England Patriots, Lynch's bitterness toward the media was on full display. Hey, I'm just here so I don't get fined. 
So y'all can sit here and ask me all the questions y'all want to. I'm going to answer with the same answer, so y'all can shoot if y'all please. I'm here so I won't get fined. Hey, look. I mean, all week, I done told y'all what's up. And for some reason, y'all continue to come back and do the same thing that y'all did. I don't know what story y'all trying to get out of me. I don't know what image y'all trying to portray of me. But it don't matter what y'all think, what y'all say about me. Because when I go home at night, the same people that I look in the face, my family, that I love, <laughs> that's all I really, that matter to me. So y'all could go and make up whatever y'all want to make up. Because I don't say enough for y'all to go and put anything out on me. But I'll come to y'all event, y'all shove cameras and microphones down my throat. But when I'm at home in my environment, I don't see y'all. <laughs> but y'all mad at me. And if y'all ain't mad at me, then what y'all here for? Actually, I'm not mad. I ain't got nothing for y'all, though. I told y'all that, so y'all should know that. But y'all will sit here, like, right now and continue to do the same thing. I'm here preparing for a game, and y'all want to ask me all these questions, which is understandable. I could get down with that. But I told y'all, I'm not about to say nothing. So for the remainder of my, what's that, three minutes, because I'm here, I'm available for y'all. I'm here, I'm available for y'all. I done talked, all of my requirements are fulfilled. So now for this next three minutes, I'll just be looking at y'all the way that y'all looking at me. Thank you. The best explanation for Lynch's distaste for and approach to the media came from himself in a 2018 sit down with former NBA player Matt Barnes. Lynch discussed how what happened in Buffalo laid the foundation for his behavior in Seattle. I said, bro, I got, I got drafted at 20 years old. So 20 years old, they set me in a situation of some shit that changed my life for forever. So all of the shit that I had on my mind, because I was still young, and as a young boy, you think as a young boy. So now that I got chicken in my pocket and I'm doing young boy shit, yeah, somewhat you gonna find some trouble along the way. But what I learned through it was not that the trouble was the shit that followed me. It was the motherfuckers who was hating on me and what they said had followed me. And then I realized that it was the media that mm -hmm. was doing that kind mm -hmm. of shit. So then, therefore, I just learned, like, the same motherfucker that I sit here and talk to and you want to laugh in my face because the situation is good is the same motherfucker that's going to go ahead and write that story and tell me that everything is all bad. It wasn't all bad, though. Amidst all the media antics, Lynch went on the Conan O'Brien show and seemed like he was enjoying himself. Oh! oh! Yes, the f you can. What? Super Bowl 49 was competitive throughout. A tightly contested game came down to the wire, with the Seahawks down four in the dying seconds, and at the one yard line, head coach Pete Carroll made a call that would become the worst decision in Super Bowl history. Pass is intercepted at the goal line by Malcolm Butler. Unreal. And I'm sorry. But I can't believe the call. Me neither. I cannot believe the call. You've got Marshawn Lynch in the backfield. You've got a guy that's been borderline unstoppable in this part of the field. I can't believe the call. The decision to pass instead of giving the ball to one of the best running backs in the sport sent the Seahawks locker room into a tailspin. It was a devastating loss, one that Sherman, Wilson, and Carroll all admitted changed the dynamic of the team. It also didn't help that Marshawn was doing commercials poking fun at it. Ooh, last one. Just hand it to me, and I'll run it over to him. Nah, I'll toss it to him. Just hand it to me. No need to throw it, man. Come on. Nah, it's really easy. I'll just throw it to him, he'll catch it. Come on, man, we so close. I could run it over. It's just right here. I just want a beer. Come on, man. I can sleepwalk that thing to him, but come on, man. All right. Ah, I think I'm going to throw it. What's the worst that could happen? What? Catch! No, no. What? No, 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 Tyler! Oh! Oh! Ah! 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 
There's even a conspiracy theory that the reason the Seahawks decided against giving the ball to Lynch was because they wanted Wilson to win MVP, something that Lynch even gave credence to saying, to be honest with you, I would be a liar if I didn't tell you that I was expecting the ball. Yes, I was expecting the ball. I think it was more of a, how do I say this? When you look at me and you let me run that ball in, I'm the face of the nation. You know, the MVP of the Super Bowl, that's pretty much the face of the nation at that point in time. I don't know what went into the call and maybe it was a good thing I didn't get the ball, but I mean, you know, it cost us a Super Bowl. Seattle still decided to sign Lynch to a two-year, $24 million contract extension that summer. But Lynch wouldn't see out that contract. The years of running and breaking tackles had taken a toll on his body. Midway through the 2015 season, Lynch had sports hernia surgery and missed half the season. By the time he returned for the Seahawks divisional playoff game versus the Panthers, he was a shell of himself. On the day of Super Bowl 50, just one year removed from having a chance to be a back-to-back -back champion, Lynch hung up his cleats, announcing his retirement in a cryptic tweet. Lynch spent most of his time in his first retirement starting up business ventures, including opening a retail location for his Beast Mode brand at home in Oakland. He became a mentor and a youth coach for inner city kids in Oakland and at Cal, and did charity work in his community. And when it was announced that the Raiders, who had spent the last 60 years in Oakland, were planning on moving to Las Vegas, Lynch came through for a city one last time. When did you know you were going to uh, come back? When did you decide you wanted to play football again? Uh, when I found out they was leaving. Lynch's accomplishments on the field in two seasons in Oakland paled in comparison to his time in Seattle and Buffalo, only rushing for 376 yards in six games by year two. But he brought an energy to the city once again with his enthusiasm on the field and in the locker room. And of course, there was controversy. After the white supremacist rally in Charlottesville, Virginia in the summer of 2017, Lynch and former teammate Michael Bennett opted to sit for the national anthem. Lynch later said that he had been doing this for his entire career, but tensions grew further when in the NFL's annual Mexico City game, Lynch stood for the Mexican national anthem, but sat for the American anthem. You don't have to agree with everything Lynch has done in his life, but you can probably notice a trend in the relationship between him and the media. Even as a young, introverted kid in Oakland, Lynch wasn't one to go out and seek attention. For the most part, whatever attention he received was thrown his way, and he definitely made the most of it throughout his career both on and off the field. He even mended his relationship in Seattle, returning for three games in the 2019 season and rushing for four touchdowns. Lynch has also made an effort to pass on what he's learned throughout his career to younger players. You know, I had a couple of players that I played with that, you know what I mean, they no longer here no more, they no longer. So, I mean, you feel me? Start taking care of y'all mentals, y'all bodies, and y'all chicken for when y'all, you know, ready to walk away. You walk away and you be able to do what you want to do. Lynch is seemingly enjoying retirement. He struck a deal with online retailer Fanatics to operate his Beast Mode retail website. He's partnered in a business venture for diamond-infused marijuana products to be sold in the Bay Area. And he even made a cameo appearance in season three of HBO's Westworld. And he hasn't ruled out returning to the game of football. So the door is still open for him to add more to an already impressive resume. Lynch's 29th all-time in career rushing is one of just 31 players to reach at least 10,000 yards rushing and sits eighth on the NFL's all-time playoff rushing yards list. He was also named to the league's 2010's all-decade team. Lynch's place in football history is undeniable. Nobody was ever as captivating as Lynch when he wanted to be. Even his silence spoke volumes, and you can see the impact it's had on the relationship athletes have with the media now. And when it came down to it, Lynch approached football the same way he approached all the obstacles in his life. That's when it just clicked in my mind that if you just run through somebody's face, a lot of people ain't gonna be able to take that over and 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 over again. They just not gonna want that. Think there's a deeper metaphor there? Run through a motherfucker face. Then you don't have to worry about them no more. Thanks for watching. If you like this video and want to see more content like this, hit that subscribe button.